good. Well, I think, you know, the message to the players after the scrimmage was, you know, now's the time to get ready for, this, for the season. You know, every practice is important. Every game is important. Um, Got to get ready for the task at hand, develop the right habits. Uh, it leads to confidence. It leads to trust, you know, in the teammates and togetherness on the team. And it comes from... You know, discipline, having the right mindset, having the right mental toughness to be able to sustain so that, you know, you can elevate your game. And instead of somebody else trying to motivate you or something motivating you, you know, how about you just focusing on what you need to do to get better so you can elevate your game without some external factor that um, whether, you know, somebody dogs you or whatever. I think it's important that you learn from your mistakes. I think that's the best opportunity you have to learn. And this group's been pretty good about, about it. Uh, this is always a challenging week, but the guys have done a really, really good job the last couple of days. We're really working on some issues and problems that you know, may come up with some of our opponents during the season and probably start on the first game on Friday. Okay, we'll start here with Charlie. Coach, you've talked about a lot of guys working a lot of spots in the secondary. Just who are some guys that are going to make the most reps at start? Uh, you know, Malachi gives reps at star. Um, Jalen gives reps at star. Um, Earl gives reps at star. So th those are probably the, the three primary guys. Um, we're also playing um, carry on. I want to have three or four guys that can play it. Um, you, don't, you don't want to you know, really have an issue when uh, one guy goes down and you got nobody else to play that spot. I'm in the middle here with Matt. What have you seen from Dallas Turner in this game? Dallas has done great. I mean, he's um, been a really good leader. He set a good example. He's worked really hard. Uh, they're very productive. And um, I. Chase. When Burton Burns was coaching your running backs, if I remember right, he philosophically he'd say he liked the backs to just make one cut and then get up field. Uh, if I'm remembering that right, is that something that still gets emphasized in the offense? Well, you know, I think you want people to run north and south. You want them to get the pass down. You want them to come one hands in the hole. But I, I think runners that are good runners, you know, are instinctive. And when they should make cuts, uh, when they should make lateral cuts, uh, when they just need to, to burst through the hole when they have an opening. And uh, I don't know if you can overcoach that, but you know, if you're going to run the ball effectively, guys got to know when to get their pads down and get north and south so you can have a four yard play and not maybe a, a negative yard play because they're trying to make something where there's nothing. And I really think that. You know, our guys, all four of them, um, do a really good job of that. Welcome to Kirk. Uh, yes, Coach. Um, I wonder if there's a downside when you have a, the quarterback position and the players taking a long time to uh, separate themselves and make a decision for you, I guess, the way to put it. Yeah, but that's kind of up to them. You know, like I said in number four, you know, I told the quarterback, I said, quit looking around for me to make a decision about who's going to play. How about you playing good enough that I don't have a choice? That's what you can control. That's what you can do. And somebody needs to do that. And um, it, it's sort of, you know, taking shape to some degree. But somebody's, somebody's got to do it. And, you know, where you all think that, you know, like whoever we name as a starter for the first game, that's like the end of it. It's not the end of it. It's just the beginning. The work the guy doesn't play good. Not entitled to keep playing. And the guy that doesn't play is got every opportunity to practice and be more consistent and win the team over so that when he gets an opportunity to play, he plays really well. I mean, we have changed quarterbacks around here a few times during the season. So I know you guys are looking for an end, but 
it's not even going to be the end in the first game. That's be kind of funny, is it? Am I not explaining that very well? Well, it really wasn't. I didn't explain it went very well in my question, I suspect, but I was wondering about yeah, I time, 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 and I time. don't want to answer it. Okay. <laughs> we're going to make the best of it for our team, and our team has to make the best of it as well. Come here, so, Stephen. And whoever plays the position, everybody's got to play well around them and do the best job that they can to help them play well. Coach, what did you see, you know, Tim Key to make the most progress? defensive line too. Yeah, Tim has done a really good job. Um, you know, he lost weight. He got in much better shape. He's moving a lot better. He's a lot quicker. He's always had a lot of ex ex you know, explosive power. Um, so he, he's been a, a really pleasant surprise at this camp to be a guy that's playing like a starter actually. Up front here with Nick. How have you seen the, the defense progress from the beginning of fall camp to now as a whole? I think just about every time something bad happens, and when I say bad happens, I'm talking about an explosive play. It's either about missed tackles or mental errors. And um, I think we've gotten better at eliminating you know, some of those. But one of the things I didn't think we did as well in the last scrimmage as the first scrimmage is tackle. And you know, that goes back to how you practice. You know, we don't really ever, and, and have never practiced where you tackle people in practice. But you have to thud them, right? So you get in position to tackle the guy, you near leg to your shoulder, you wrap the guy up, so you're always in position to tackle. And if you do that consistently, then when you have to tackle people, you're gonna be in the right position. And that's something that we really emphasize with our players, you know, this week to try to improve the tackle. Mike Rodak. Just how has the transfer portal affected your ability to retain and, and develop some of the players that you've recruited at wide receiver in particular? Um, I, I don't know. I don't know who you're specifically, you know, talking about. But um, you know, guys are getting transfer portal. This this is not for everybody. Okay, so I think maybe. People that want to be here, want to be good, want to do the best they can, develop value for their future, and who they are as a person, what kind of requirements we have for them to succeed academically so they can develop a career on the field, and what we're going to do to try to develop them on the field. And I, I think, I'm not mentioning any names, but there's only like one player that I was really like disappointed that, you know, the guy didn't stay here, and I couldn't understand why he was leaving. And, um, you know, and all the rest of them, they would have contributed if they stayed and had the right attitude, but it's their choice. And you know, what we have an opportunity to do when guys leave is we have an opportunity to replace them too. Okay, we've got two more. Austin and Tucker. Yeah, Coach, a little different, but today being the first day of classes, what do you remember from your first day of school at Kent State? No. <laughs> 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 yeah, well. <laughs> you know, I will say this about the team. You know, I told them last night, I said, I know tomorrow's your first day at college. I'm talking about everybody. College. You're going to college tomorrow. So most of the time, that really impacts the quality of practice that we have. But that wasn't the case today. They were focused and practiced and you know, they were ready to go, and um, so you know maybe it's online classes. I don't know, <laughs> but I really don't remember much of anything about. You know, the biggest thing I remember about going to college was a the day my parents dropped me off at school, and I felt like I was all alone and didn't know anybody in the world, and how difficult it was to sort of develop relationships and get started and figure out how do I fit in here and what do I need to do. Um, so I remember that, but that wasn't the first day of class. And um, then I remember what happened on May 4th. You know, that's probably the two things I remember the most. Hey, 
Fisher or Tony. What has Caden Proctor shown you since joining the team and how much progress has he made? Um, you know, he's shown me he's big. And uh, he's made a lot of progress. He's improved a lot. Uh, he's got a lot of ability. And there's things that he needs to continue to work on. And obviously, experience is going to help him. Uh, and when you get experience, experience is a culmination of how, how do you learn from your mistakes? And that's what experience is. And um, so and he's been pretty good about that. Uh, I think Booker playing next to him, the left guard, has helped him a lot. Um, because he puts a veteran player next to him who gives him a little bit of security and make calls and that type of thing. So that's been a good thing for us. All right, Coach, thank you. Is that it? That's it. Oh, yeah. Do I do OK today? <laughs> I mean, I haven't asked you guys that since I had my media training exactly how well I'm doing, so I just thought. We'll send Josh a report.